Uh, guys, we obviously were here a couple of weeks ago doing the exact same thing. Does it feel a bit weird to be playing another derby in the same season? Yeah, it's great. Like The boys get to play two a year and um, hopefully down the track when we get enough games in the AFLW, uh, we get that opportunity. So it's a great rivalry just from the clubs, but also some of the girls are, are good mates and play at the same Waffle W club. So uh, I know our girls are really excited when uh, the fixture got announced and uh, would get to play another one. And same question for you, Daniel. Yeah, it's uh, obviously good to have a run around against um, the quality te team again. So, and on Optus Stadium, uh, we should get some a fair few good numbers in there with the men playing afterwards, uh, which is uh, really good for the girls to experience that environment. Just on that, how important is that for the girls? It's so rare to, to play at a, a facility this big and b a, a crowd that's anticipated like this. Yeah, well, you'd think in the you know, next five or ten years, um, the girls will probably play in front of similar crowds um, if, if we get what we want uh, in the future uh, to what they're going to play in front of this weekend. So if there's, I guess, 20 to 30,000 there, that would be a great outcome for the girls to experience from both teams. How big a difference have you noticed this week with your girls in the mood after that breakthrough? Uh, yeah, they've been good. They're pretty consistent, our girls, with um, where they're at. We're in a learning development phase, so... Uh, there's a lot to learn from the game on the weekend. We got lucky in some ways and uh, we probably could have won by a couple more if we had got things right in, in the second quarter. So, uh, you know, it's not, we're not too high or too low. We're just uh, trying to go with the flow for the rest of the year. It must give you a big confidence boost, though, when you're talking about so many girls so, so new to this environment and a new club in the AFLW as a whole. It must give you a boost to show that you can beat other teams. Yeah, well, I feel like we've been really consistent. Uh, our coaches have been really consistent with their messaging and uh, we're trying to keep the game nice and simple for them. And we're just teaching about the basic, not the basics of the game, but learning about the actual game of football. So you're going to have your ups and downs. And we've probably played one and a half bad quarters a week. And that's hurt us a few times. It really hurt us on the weekend again. So we're just trying to um, you know, bring those consistencies up a bit higher. Trent, what about your girls? It seems like it's been an age since they've lost a game. How have they responded to it? Yeah, really well, actually. We had a, uh, an eight-day break, so we gave them two days completely off, and um, they've come back really refreshed. And, um, yeah, it was... It's not a loss that we wanted, but I, I've just noticed, uh, yeah, a def definite improvement in the attitude that they're really keen to get going now and, and really refreshed. So uh, it's been a you know, good timing for us to have the eight-day break after that. What have you identified and drilled home to them in terms of where it went wrong and the, the areas for improvement out of that game? Yeah, there was a couple of things that the mindset in general wasn't wasn't great. So that was the we have to address that because if you go into a game against quality opposition without the right mindset, we're going to be in trouble. Um, but then, yeah, we just panicked a bit when Brisbane did get numbers behind the ball. So we talked about different ways we can do that. I think last week we had the fourth um, or the yeah, fourth least experienced team in the whole park and the whole competition as far as games played so we've got a good core senior M but we had eight players under 22 so just educating them and, and not panicking and we need the senior players to help them to do that if that situation arises to, to be able to get the result when things aren't going our way. The Eagles gave you quite a game last time I think they surprised a lot of people with, with how far they challenged you how much do you take out of that, that last game or how much is this one a whole new ball game yeah they didn't really surprise us because they really challenged us in a practice match just a couple of weeks before that and uh, last time they really yeah, played a, a strong brand of footy and we had to, uh, to fight our way through it after the game our girls they talked in their trademark and how they felt about the game but there was a lot of unfulfilled and uh, dissatisfied so I think that they're really ready for a uh, uh, to play a lot better this week. Uh, last game, obviously the conditions were poor, but also we had a crowd of zero. So it was a, it was a really funny day. And this week, weather should be great, uh, top of the ground with a great crowd at a great stadium. So there's every reason for everyone to be excited. And Daniel, obviously lots of ex-Dockers on your list as well. Did the girls sort of um, get a bit more out of this game and get a bit more excited than they usually would? Oh, I think the fact that they a lot of them know each other, it's exciting to play against each other, but. Uh, yeah, we played them, played them four weeks ago, so I think the girls are keen to play uh, in the future some other teams as well. So, uh, and, and really, as Trent mentioned before, develop into a professional competition where you get to play every team. So, uh, I think overall they're excited about playing Freo on Optus. Um, I think everyone in WA loves a derby, and this is going to be the third one in a week after the men's played last week as well. So, that's an exciting time for everyone. And Trent, obviously, with the fixture double ops, probably a beginner come a feature now. Is it hard to sort of gauge exactly where you're at playing the same teams? Uh, no, it's a good, you know, it's a good opportunity. Like we said, you know, 
one RAC derby is good, but two RAC derbies is even better. But then after that, we're hoping that things change and we do get to play different different sides. So, um, yeah, it'd be, we'd really like to take on the, the good sides from Victoria if possible. And uh, yeah, hopefully there's uh, some changes to the to the borders and we can, we can do that if possible. But if not, then, yeah, we'll take on the Adelaides and the Brisbane's who are the really good teams as well. On that, have you... But it feels like you've been at home for a lot of this season. Have you been given any indication as to what's next and when you'll go east, if you might actually stay east? What's I, I don't. I think they're thinking about fly and flight model. Uh, we were ready to hub. We'd already gone away for two weeks, uh, or for almost three weeks, was when we'd, we'd head off. But we got AFL wanted us back after five days in the end, so uh, we adhered to that. I think they're now thinking that we can do fly and fly out for the rest of the season. Um, so that's what we're sort of prepared for. But we're also prepared for anything else. 2019, 2020, you have to be. So, uh, yeah, we're ready for, for whatever does come our way. Have they given you much of an indication? Like, are we talking next week? Do you know where and who or anything like that? Uh, we don't, but we believe that the fixtures are going to come out in the next day or two for the final three rounds. And that, that'll be really exciting for the girls to see who they're going to play. It's exciting because they can actually set up their work lives as well. The, um, you know, we can tell them what nights they're training and they can really plan their lives. So, uh, yeah, we're hoping that does happen and we're looking forward to that. And I know that the girls will be really pleased when that does happen. Just a, one that we asked Daniel as well, um, the chance to play on Optus Stadium, the chance to play in what's expected to be a, a bigger crowd than you would normally play in front of. How valuable is that for these girls? Yeah, it's really good. Like we, you know, hopefully we'll be part of finals and you know, the crowds get bigger then. Um, we've mixed it up. We've played a few games with zero like last year as well. Uh, we played at Optus Stadium where there was 35,000 against West Coast the year before. So uh, the, the crowd, the noise, the atmosphere. The girls do really well when there's no crowd, but it has to help anybody uh, you know, just get that little bit of adrenaline when the, the crowd's there cheering. So we're really looking forward to, to that opportunity. A few knocks against Gold Coast, Daniel. Any availability concerns heading into this weekend? Uh, not really at this point. We'll, we'll find a bit more tonight. We've got our main session. Uh, hopefully, we get. I think we're going to get McCarthy back, which will be nice. Uh, but yeah, this has been one of those years for us where we've probably lost one or two soldiers every week. So uh, just trying to build that uh, depth back up again for the uh, rest of the year. And Trent and McMahon made a pretty triumphant return in the Waffle W on the weekend. Is it good to have her back out playing footy again? Yeah, absolutely. So she's played two games now. And um, the first game, uh, yes, I think she struggled, which was no surprise in the first game since 2019. Last week she had uh, yeah, 18 touches and uh, nine tackles. So, um, yeah, she's still a fair way off her best, but she's getting back towards it, which is, which is really exciting. And the Waffle W competition's been great because Caddy Jane Greaves now built some really good form behind her. Uh, Michaela Hyde's had two really good weeks in the, in the Waffle W. So we can now pick players on form rather than sort of guessing a bit, which we've had to do in the past. So, uh, yeah, really pleased with that competition and the way it's going. Can we just get a line from each of you about why we're here in Jandicott and, and the initiatives surrounding DFES and RAC? Yeah, no, RAC has been such a you know, big supporter of the Derby, but just you know, everything in general. We think back to the first Derby where they donated 100000 um, you know, to the to the bushfire appeal. Um, it wasn't had to make up the figure because it wasn't a day for marks or goals, unfortunately. It would have been a lot better this weekend, but yeah, they put in a lot of... A lot of support to, to all of that, so we're really appreciative, uh, appreciative of the support that they've given, and it's great that they get rewarded with a, a second RAC Derby this year. And Daniel as well? Uh, yeah, having them uh, support the community and the way that our girls fought it out the first RAC um, Derby would have been fantastic. It was dry, because as Trent said, I think we only got $28,000 from that just because of the conditions, so, so they only had 100000 to the community. It was fantastic.